guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I upgraded my recording software now, so I have the kind of full deal, but I'm kind of still learning the ins and outs of it all, so if it, if it sounds a bit weird at times, it's just because I haven't quite mastered that. And I'm going to say now, if I sound tired, it's because I am, because last night a group of friends and myself were being chased by zombies or shooting them with nerf guns, and it was exhausting and I didn't get much sleep. Uh, and secondly, as it says on the channel description and in my previous video intro, for every 50 subscribers the channel gets, I will be donating to the mental health charity Mind. Uh, it's an important cause to me, and they really depend on a lot of donations, so for every donation, it goes a long way. Today's video is on a discussion point that is high among comic book fans and general MCU fans, the X-Men in the MCU. Now that Disney have acquired the assets, the characters will most probably be on their way and a lot of rumours suggest it could be Phase 5. Honestly, it would be probably be a really good time for them to introduce it. Phase 4 is kind of laying the groundwork for kind of a fresh new story with new characters and new universe almost. So Phase 5 could be when we see, or at least are, introduced to the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Today I'll be talking about the X-Men, but instead of how they join the MCU, which is probably the biggest discussion among MCU fans about the X-Men, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the X-Men giving a bit of information for people that don't know much about them. About a lineup of X-Men that I would particularly like to see as their kind of first team outing. And then about two female, two filmmakers, sorry, in particular, who would be kind of my first choice to handle the X-Men in the MCU in regards to their introduction and then kind of helming the whole overview of their project. Uh, so, a little bit of information first for people that aren't too familiar with them or just a chance to get a bit geeky. The X-Men debuted in 1963 in X-Men 1, surprisingly, uh, and the lineup has taken a huge amount of forms, like, like the Avengers and DC's Justice League. The X-Men are no different in the sense that they have had a lot of different lineups for their characters, and there's a lot of different groups which splinter off from the X-Men, so like there's the X-Force and Extreme, X-Factor, etc. Um, the original lineup was Cyclops, Marvel Girl, aka Jean Grey, Iceman, Beast, and Angel. And they were kind of led or overseen by Professor X. The issue also introduced the X Men's arch enemy, or nowadays one of their arch enemies, and my favourite uh, mutant, Magneto, along with his Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Uh, they were kind of a team to oppose the X Men, uh, which have had many famous characters over the years, such as. Mystique, Juggernaut, Rogue, Pyro, they've all become quite big figures in kind of mutant X-Men lore, as it were. How exactly the X-Men enter into the MCU is another matter entirely, and I may touch upon this in future videos, uh, but it's it's way too messy and too complicated. Like I've been in so many different discussions with friends and in Facebook groups, online forums, about how would be the best way to bring the MCU together with the X-Men, and Honestly, there's no one amazing way because there's a lot of things they'd have to tackle in terms of like where have they been all this time or if they're from a different universe, how's that going to work with the whole ancient historical villains, etc. So I'm just not going to kind of really topic talk about that much, sorry, on this video. Um, but for the lineup, uh, I, I, the lineup I have in mind is kind of a somewhat altered version of the original team keeping the core elements but changing some others to kind of add some diversity. So the one I had in mind is uh, Cyclops, Storm, Iceman, Dazzler, Beast and Northstar, which is kind of, it provides a diverse team with an interesting array of powers and I actually did have Shadowcat, uh, Kitty Pride in there instead of Iceman until, up until about a day ago actually, I just kind of decided last minute that to switch Iceman out for Kitty Pride, I just think he coupled with maybe Storm and North Star would make a really interesting dynamic. Also, I'm sure that keen X-Men fans will note that Jean Grey, aka Phoenix or Marvel Girl as she used to be called, is not there and this is deliberate. I would rather they introduce her later on or even during the film but not have her as a major character and this is because Jean was the focus of two X-Men storylines at Fox. I mean, arguably you could say that Wolverine was really the main focus, but however, the Dark Phoenix arc, essentially, was explored two times in two different storylines at Fox, and personally, I would prefer other characters to take a larger role and there to not be this immediate focus upon Jean. And also, because of the extent of her powers, even before 
she gets the kind of phoenix host she has crazy like psionic abilities so maybe introducing that right at the start would be like too large of a thing for them to go for so i personally would just kind of rather they didn't focus on that and then they brought it in later and i would have them clash with the brotherhood of evil and then in maybe a credit scene or a little bit later down the line i'd introduce gambit and Sabretooth and the morlocks and that would basically set up a kind of an interesting arc to come and i will, I will branch back to that in a bit later because it's kind of ties quite closely in with one of the uh, one of the filmmakers I have in mind to kind of helm the X-Men. So before I introduce said filmmakers I just wanted to add a bit of a setting. The X-Men are wrapped in politics and tragedy and so bringing them into the MCU will require a touch that in my opinion only a select few filmmakers can bring. The whole premise of mutant kind struggle against humanity comes from the fact that they are different and so feared and hated. With the prejudice prejudice sorry, and discrimination being right at the forefront of their themes, the setting will naturally be deeply political. And I, I think even if they're adapted to modern times, which is looking more and more likely, given that if they aren't adapted to modern times, a lot of them are going to be like almost 100 years old, that's probably not going to work too well. Um, not going to be much of a fight if they're all hobbling around on walking sticks. Uh, and so, yeah, this is still going to be a theme that will, they'll probably try and make it run quite deep within the kind of established mythos of the X-Men. These two filmmakers I've gone for are very different and I've only talked about two today and I want to say now that doesn't mean I think only these are the only two filmmakers that would be suitable or best for handling the X-Men. They're just two that after a kind of long thought I didn't want to make the video too long I just wanted to talk about a smaller amount of them. Again it's something I might come back to later on in the future if I talk about how the X-Men will join the MCU and other X-Men MCU Studios related material. But these two filmmakers are very different and that might come as a bit of a surprise, but I think even though the X-Men are a deeply political kind of element, I don't think you'd have to have a really political, politically driven filmmaker to, to kind of helm the project. It, it all comes down to the individual styles and the story you're handling, the overall arc, and you get some films which are handled by people that have only really made comedy films or something and they still do a phenomenal job when it comes to adapting serious source material. Like, I recently watched all of Chernobyl on HBO and that is hands down one of the best TV shows I've ever seen. And the guy who wrote it, he's only done comedies beforehand. So it's just, and the reason I'm saying this is just to kind of get a bit of an idea that although these two filmmakers I've chosen are very different, I still feel the reasons I've chosen them are kind of good enough alone to see why they would, they would be the best for bringing the X-Men into the MCU. So first up is Ava DuVernay. Ava DuVernay is a perfect choice to helm the MCU's X-Men, not only for their first film, but also to be the creative in charge of the whole first act for Mutant Kind, so kind of overseeing the whole story as they go forward. She is very politically charged. The director has made waves with her like political filmmaking. She directed the biopic of Martin Luther King Jr. called Selma, uh, the documentary 13th, which earned her an Oscar nomination. And she also, she also created, wrote, and directed the Netflix show When They See Us, which went on to win two Emmy Awards. And that is also a damn good show. I would recommend that to pretty much anyone that likes crime, history, likes learning about that whole kind of era. That's really brilliant. And Ava is... Ava has a flair, sorry, for creating dramatic and lasting effect, and that's one of the reasons I think she'll be perfect for the X-Men, because their first entry into the MCU has got to be something big, not like too big, not like an immense like announcement, not like nothing like as big as Endgame or Infinity War, but still something that's going to last, like stay with fans. And she's so good at bringing emotion right to the surface and like having powerful, motivating characters. Also, by the time the X-Men join the MCU, she won't be new to the comic book film, that film scene, having directed uh, the DC New Gods film by then. I mean, supposedly coming out 2021, but we don't don't know for now. But anyway, she won't be like fresh on the scene to comic book films by then. And also, she's a really interesting and empowering person. Uh, I just find, I just like, I love watching interviews with her. I think she's so interesting and she's really, passionate about what she does and ultimately that should be the kind of 
biggest inspiration behind the filmmaker. Um, she's probably my personal favourite choice to take on the MCU's X-Men, especially if their stories were leaning towards something much darker. And this is going back to what I was saying about the lineup of characters I'd use and introducing Gambit and Sabretooth and the Morlocks. I'd all basically, if I was going down that route, I would lead towards a film like Mutant Massacre or God Loves, Man Kills, something like that. And I feel that she would be absolutely perfect to take on that kind of politically charged, dramatic, darker take on the X-Men, but still with kind of splashes of humour here and there. My second choice is none other than director, producer and comic book writer Joss Whedon. And this may seem a somewhat strange choice to my friends, especially the ones that know me really well, because they know that I have not been a fan, to put it nicely, of Joss Whedon's most kind of more recent body of work. Especially for like his most recent superhero endeavor, Justice League. I know it wasn't really his film, but the changes he made to it ultimately I did not enjoy. And I really didn't like the MCU film Age of Ultron. However, he does have a lot of good credits to his name. If we put aside those bad projects, uh, in particular what comes to mind is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is an original creation of his. And that show, and what a show that was, sorry. And he also directed one of the best MCU films, in my opinion, which is the 2012 Avengers Assemble, or just the Avengers. And these two projects kind of, in my mind, show that handing the X-Men to him would be almost second nature. He's really good at bringing together different characters to make teams and then setting up these kind of fantastical, really enjoyable, long storylines. And he has a knack for bringing in supernatural elements, hence Buffy. He's, he's really good with humor, but not only all that, he also wrote a long running series of X-Men comics titled The Astonishing X-Men, which is still regarded as one of the best X-Men stories. It would certainly be a substantial aid in adapting the X-Men to the big screen. I'm gonna do a post or a, a video in the future on my favorite X-Men stories, and I'll explain in that video why Astonishing X-Men is still one of my favorite uh, it did land in my top three choices for best X-Men comic books. And I feel that with Whedon's own experience in kind of team films and with the comics, it would make him a brilliant candidate to write, direct, or both for the MCU's X-Men. And while he may lack the kind of politically charged filmmaking that someone like Ava DuVernay would bring, I think he makes up for it in his experience with teams and as I said, his kind of fantastic, quirky storylines. and. Although the X-Men are wrapped in kind of tragedy and politics and mystery to an extent, they also have some really light-hearted moments and stories and some kind of really heartwarming ones, and I feel that he would probably be one of the best candidates to tackle that sort of them. Also, going off on a little bit on a tangent here, I think it would be really interesting to see what would happen if they worked together. I'm not sure if that ultimately would be a good decision or a bad decision, but I would quite like to see the outcome of Ava DuVernay and Joss Whedon working together, especially if Joss Whedon was the kind of writer and Ava DuVernay was directing. I think that could turn out to be something really, really cool, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, that's kind of, that's the video for today, really. It's already gone on to like 11, 12 minutes, and I was kind of hoping it wouldn't go on for that long. Uh, you know, if you feel free to let me know what you think of the lineup or what lineup you'd go for in the uh, MCU as their first big outing. And also, who are your kind of favorite, or if you have favorite directors or filmmakers that you would like to see tackle the X-Men of the MCU? And uh, on that note, I would just say that honorable suggestions, I really like the idea of uh, Brad Bird, who did The Incredibles and a few of the Mission Impossible films, taking over or having a shot at the uh, MCU's X-Men, but he just wouldn't be kind of in my top kind of candidates for their first like entry and story in the MCU. So have a good day or have a good weekend. Uh, and if you watched all my video, then thanks very much. And I will see you next time.